guys, how are you? Um, today we are continuing our journey looking at solitude in the scriptures. We're looking at Jesus' example of stillness before the Lord. Um, this week we're going to take a different take on it. We're going to kind of compare and contrast solitude and isolation. Um, so solitude is something that's generally sought after. Um, being alone, being still before the Lord is a good thing. And often we can make the personal choice. We can choose solitude. Um, but isolation, on the other hand, is usually avoided. Nobody wants to feel loneliness. Nobody wants to be alone and be misunderstood. It's not desired. Um, and sometimes it can even be forced on us. We can be forced into isolation, forced into loneliness. So last week, we looked at two examples of Jesus choosing solitude. He chose stillness before his father, time to pray, time to regroup um, before he went to do ministry. Um, today, we're going to look at a different example. We're going to see Jesus in the wilderness, alone, isolated. Um, and while he's in the wilderness, he's being tempted. Um, so we're going to see a little bit of uh, a different perspective on loneliness. What can we learn from loneliness? What can we learn from isolation? Um, this is found in the Gospel of Luke chapter 4. So that's where we're going to be today. But first, I'm going to pray for us, and then we're going to dive in and see what can be learned from this passage. Father God, we are just so grateful that you promised to never leave us nor forsake us. And so we can hold um, firmly to that, that even when we feel um, isolated or alone here on the earth, we can know um, with unshakable um, with just certainty, Father, that you are always with us. And so I thank you um, for the word that, that reminds us of the truth. We are rooted, we are established in you and love, and, and you love us. You'll never leave us. We're not alone. So I thank you for that truth, God. And I pray that as we look to Jesus now, as we look at a passage of him being lonely in the wilderness, that we can learn something from him and that you will use it to better us for your kingdom, for your glory, and for our good. In Jesus' name, amen. So we're in Luke chapter four. We're going to read from the first verse all the way until verse 13 here. And Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the spirit in the wilderness for 40 days, being tempted by the devil. And he ate nothing during those days. And when they were ended, he was hungry. The devil said to him, if you are the son of God, command this stone to become bread. And Jesus answered him, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone. And the devil took him up and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time and said to him, to you, I will give all this authority and their glory for it has been delivered to me and I give it to whom I will. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. And Jesus answered him, it is written, you shall not worship the Lord, excuse me, you shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. And he took him to Jerusalem and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to guard you, and on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against the stone. And Jesus answered him, It is said, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test, and when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from him until an opportune time. In the same um, account in the Gospel of Matthew, um, chapter 4, verse 11, it says, Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and were ministering to him. Um, so what can be seen here? Uh, what can be learned from Jesus' experience with isolation in the wilderness? Um, so first thing to know is this um, this account happens right after Jesus has been baptized. And so at Jesus's baptism, the Holy Spirit anoints him. And so it says in the very first verse, and Jesus full of the Holy Spirit. Um, so that's the same spirit um, that Jesus was anointed with at his baptism. The Holy Spirit led him to the wilderness. And this account is the last kind of preparatory event before Jesus is freed off um, and goes into ministry. Um, so he goes into the wilderness, and this is a time of preparation, right? He's going to be put to the test. So the first thing we see here is Jesus responds to Satan's challenges with the word of God. Um, 
all these passages that are recited here come from Deuteronomy. Uh, we see Jesus that he knows the word. He's well acquainted with the word of God. Satan is a liar, right? And Jesus identifies those lies and he exposes those lies with the truth. The second thing we see here with the spirit, um, the Holy Spirit is with Jesus here. We as Christians have the Holy Spirit living in us as well. With the spirit, the enemy is defeated. He has no place here. We don't have to give in to temptation. For 40 days, Jesus is here. It says um, he's in the wilderness for 40 days being tempted by the devil. So can you imagine being all alone with no human contact whatsoever in the hot desert wilderness with no food? You're weak, right? You're hungry. You're starting to become a little delirious. You're talking to yourself. You feel confused. You're isolated. He's weak. Jesus is fully human. His body is weak. His spirit is discouraged. Can you imagine how discouraging that is? And Satan uses this time to tempt him. He knows that he's vulnerable. But temptation and sin are different. Jesus is here alone for 40 days, but at no point did he turn his back on his father. Did he turn his back to the truth of God's word? He's tempted. He, he goes through everything we go through as humans, but he is without sin. And the last thing that I see here that I want to point out, God does not tempt you, but he will use situations to test you, to prepare you, to grow you. It was all a part of God's plan for Jesus to be in the wilderness. He's not outside of God's plan at all. It says the spirit filled with the Holy Spirit returned to the Jordan and was led by the spirit into the wilderness. God planned for this to happen. He knew it was all a part of his plan. But God doesn't tempt us. He doesn't want to see us fall, but he will use that temptation to grow us and to prepare us. And so my challenge is to you in response to all of these. One, Jesus responds to Satan with the word of God. My challenge to you is to give familiar with God's word. Be in the word. We have to know what it says to use it as our defense. Satan is defeated in the face of truth. Number two, with the Holy Spirit inside of you, you have the power to respond to temptation in a God-honoring way. We can choose holiness. We can choose not to sin. Yes, we will be tempted. That's going to happen to us. But we don't have to give in to it. Make no provision for sin. Don't provide a way for it to thrive. Number three, let God do his work in you. God can use situations like this, situations of loneliness and isolation, um, situations where you feel weak and tired and vulnerable. He can use those things to make you stronger, to grow you, to build endurance within you. All you have to do is cling to him. Cling to the truth of God's word. Pray and ask for God's Holy Spirit to help empower you. The same spirit that lives in Jesus, the same spirit that anointed Jesus at his baptism, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, it lives inside of you. You have that power. Cling to God, invite the Holy Spirit, and let God do his work in you. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for your spirit. I thank you that you dwell inside of us, that you've made your home inside of us. And with the Holy Spirit, God, we have the power to defeat Satan. We have the power over sin and temptation. God, you will not allow us to be defeated. We are victorious in Christ. We are victorious in the Spirit. We are your sons and your daughters. And you can use situations of loneliness and isolation to build us up. Father, it says in this passage that angels came to minister to him, and your word ministers to us. You minister to our spirit. You build us up. When we are weak, you are made strong. And so, God, I just declare your strength over myself. I declare your strength over these students, God, that you will use whatever situations that we are in to build us up for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen.